What's up, everybody? It is I, Sigma, and we are back with episode 32? 32 of the BBET Games Cast. <laughs> I'm joined by Superman Jeff. What's going on, people? It's your favorite superhero. As well as Mr. Gamer. Hello there. And Blue Bones. It's your boy. What's going on, y'all? So, as we do every week, we like to start with what we've been playing. Um, anybody feel like going first? I really haven't been playing I that much. I would love to. Go right I ahead. Would positively love to so i had just before we started recording a wonderful session with blue <laughs> right here where we're like okay gamer we're gonna play some gta online we're gonna get you some money because i'm still new to the game and blue had so many different things to show me and then um, we still got more we still got <clears> more to check out <laughs> oh so much more um i miss uh, I, there was a miss input and somehow blue and i were in a death match for some reason and i'm like oh Okay, this is this is weird, and he was he got four straight kills on me, like just <laughs> just obliterated me. I was it told me I was on a losing streak, mm -hmm. and then after that, it's like you know what, this just ain't working anymore. I'm gonna take your motorcycle and <laughs> ram it into you. I see where this is going. Like, let's he stop ran me this over with his own motor with his own bike with my own bike like three or four times. Mm. <laughs> in a row. Now I didn't die on impact every time. It was like about twice it happened. <laughs> yeah. But then he'd just get off and just da 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 finish me off. It was it was funny. It was it, funny. It, I was it like, was bro, you on the bike. Now just a little bit now just a little bit of context. Um mm -hmm. you could be a part of a motorcycle club in this video game, and if you leave the club, you're marked for death. I yeah, yeah, yeah. That Wait, that's like an automatic thing? Yes, yeah. you're automatically marked for death when you leave the motorcycle club. So it's you, like, shouldn't have, you shouldn't have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> now, see, I made that mistake thinking I'm playing with my friends. They're not going to try and kill me. But wait, I accidentally stole someone's um, car, an NPC car. And then I get a text message. Oh, I'm going to come after you, scumbag. And there's a $5,000 bounty on me. And I hear blue in my ears like, Hey, uh, let me get that five thousand. Let me I'm get that like, five grand, what? bro. I'm trying to get paid. You know what I'm saying? Don't give it to nobody else. <laughs> so I'm running. So I'm like driving away. Like, man, Blue, where are you? And he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of this systematically. I'm like, systematically? What are you talking about? Next thing you know, I hear like, and I'm like, you know, my tires are out. So I'm like, oh, so that's what we're doing. Swerving. Had to get out that car, man. He cut the brake line on you. Yeah, I got the five grand. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I'm just systematically. Five, honestly, I haven't played in a in a hot minute. It's fun. Well, it's on Game Pass, so you should yeah. definitely pick it up. Uh, we he already owns it. We just uh, mm -hmm. that's a long download there. <laughs> it really is oh. if you don't have it. Yeah, already. I might I might have took it off the hard drive. I, I had to double check. I I took it off. It was taking up space. We'll get you. We gotta get everybody these. Matter of nice, fact, I think this uh, coming Friday, that's what upgrades. we're trying to play for free for all, right? GTA Five again. Yeah, that's actually next week Friday. This this coming Ooh. week. Right. So, yeah. might as well start that download over. <laughs> but anyhow, um, oh. I'll go next. Um, okay, what you got? No, 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 you won't. I won't. Ooh. I'm not gonna go next. Good night. You can go next. <laughs> okay, that's, <laughs> that's what I thought. I like this. <laughs> So I started playing this new game for review. I just finished writing, doing the write-ups. I'm waiting for edits. Uh, but it's a game yeah. called Ministry of Broadcast. Um, it's a 2D platformer. Uh, you know, pixel art, very, very beautiful looking. Um, like, if you if you ever, like, randomly see on Facebook, people will have, like, these kind of animated pixel art backgrounds. It's just look like Vista Scapes and stuff like that. But, like, it's just very, very detailed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kind of in the vein of what the game looks like. So it's, like, really good looking. Even though the character models are like, you know, super pixely, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, it's very story driven. Have any of you guys read the book or maybe seen the old old movie 1984, or at least are yes. familiar with it? Yes. I'm definitely uh, yeah, I'm George familiar. Orwell. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite books. I read it randomly in high school, and it's like stuck with me forever. But it's yeah. a, essentially it's about like a totalitarian government and how oppressive it is and it's control over its citizens like everything they do are, is watched everything they do is monitored and that they're not allowed to, right they're not allowed to have a free thought and stuff like that so this is this right. takes a lot of cues from that 
you know, that kind of society. But they also that. throw in the fact that it's a reality TV show. So, like, you're playing as a contestant on a reality TV show where if you win the show, you get to basically leave the the oppressive side of the country because they put up a big wall and uh, your main character, who they don't name, he's just, you know, a ginger guy who they keep referring to as orange and stuff. Uh, okay. He gets to go see his family, you know, if he wins the reality show. But, you know, like, you know how a bureaucratic totalitarian government is, like, you don't ever really know what's going on. Nothing they yeah. really tell you is ever as it seems. Yeah, so, like, he's trying stacked. to figure out how to even compete in the show, but really he's kind of just shuffling from, uh, you know, he's getting interviewed by scientists, he's walking through, like, a warehouse, he's being forced to go to bed, like, someone stole his shoes, no one will tell him where to get new shoes, he's walking around the entire game, like, barefoot and stuff. So it's it, cool. like it's a it's like a lot of dark humor and like kind of existential humor and whatnot. Like there's a crow that talks to you and they don't ever really explain how or why. Like <laughs> there's a there's a good chance it's in your head or at least part of it is in your head. Oh, it's but a siren. Don't... I gotcha. A siren. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the thing is, I the the puzzles in the game. Mm-hmm are very similar to like say journey not journey um limbo or um oh. inside you know what i mean like it's it's mm. all just climbing things like pushing boxes jumping yeah. on top of things hitting levers but the the animation is so deliberate that um it it's actually the most challenging part of the game and not necessarily in like a good way okay. it's like you have to you have to run you'll have momentum you have to jump and it's like in like in certain games you like tap the jump button a bunch of times because you want to jump yeah. at the right time if you were to jump press the jump button like 3 times you'll jump 3 times like regardless of almost... oh like short hops no like you're just going to you're going to do the jump animation like if you press it twice one in the jump once you will jump twice oh so it's like a like it's, it's hard jump? to explain it's like like they, do they actually? Does he actually like gain elevation every jump? No, like he'll jump, oh, and so then he'll the jump. Animation. Yeah, it's the animation. They're super deliberate. That's like, annoying. Think, it is annoying. Like it, it, yeah. think like um like momentum in like uh like a, an NBA two K game or something. Like you you start the animation like and like it plays through its whole thing, and then you <laughs> regain control or whatever. Like it just it just makes the platforming a lot more complicated than it needs to be and i feel like they they kind of do it that way on purpose because they want you to kind of feel the weight of i guess the decisions he's making to like jump and to do this in the the third but it just causes you to die unceremoniously (laughs) and then like they'll kick you back to the start of like an entire whole sequence and some of the sequences they have are actually really cool and interesting but you have to learn how to get through them and the only way you learn is by basically getting killed trial and error yeah so okay, I got over this thing and I jumped this thing and then I died because that's what happens when you do that. So yeah. now I go back to the beginning, I jump over this thing, I climb this thing, and then I have to wait a second and then I can go to the next thing, but then I die because the fall floor the floor falls out from under me or something. So it's like... Oh my goodness. Yeah, it, it just, yeah, that, that it just drags like it just drags a lot of that stuff out where, whereas, you know, the, some of the set pieces are actually like really cool. Like they're beautifully rendered. <laughs> they, they have cool music that pop in at that moment to kind of accentuate what you're doing but then you keep having to redo it because it's kind of part of the gameplay that you die and just do it over and over again so that reminds me of those like you'll see those gifs of the custom super mario um uh levels right. where people like they'll jump to one brick and then like something else kills them and they yeah jump, <laughs> jump over that and then you know they go through these whole trial and error things and you can tell how frustrated they are by the end of it and how precise every jump needs to be. Yeah, it, it, it definitely happens, needs like. to be precise. So I, I'd have had more fun with the platform if it was a little more forgiving, especially since they're trying to tell you a story, like, because this kind of thing can just push people away and then they'll never care to see how things end. Yeah. But um, I managed to, to push all the way through it, and honestly, it wasn't worth it, I felt like. Like, they, they didn't really do a great job of wrapping up all of the, the story threads and explaining everything that was happening and why everything was happening. Like, right, right, they kind of right. gave you a weird and kooky world to get interested in, but then didn't necessarily, uh, you know, flesh it out enough to, at least narratively, they didn't flesh it out enough to make you continuously care about it after the fact or make you feel like 
what you learned was like worth anything. It's kind of just these are a bunch of an event. Uh, these are a bunch of events that happened, and now they are not happening. It's kind of oh. how I ended up feeling. So, I mean, some people might feel differently. Um, I feel like it, yeah. it might get a bit of mixed uh, reception because there's a lot to like in it, but you know, mm-hmm. there are some rough edges here and there. But that's pretty much all I've been playing uh, this past week. Okay, 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 okay. What you got, Superman? Superman um, Jeff. So I've been pretty much playing uh play a little bit of Borderlands this week. Um today was a rough week, a lot of work. So I didn't really get to play as much, but I played some Borderlands, did some more farming. Mm-hmm. Um what are you farming for specifically? Um, different weapons. Um so I'll look up, you know reviews on legendary weapons, certain ones. I'll see how they work. Um, if I feel like it's something I should grab, I'll go ahead and farm for it. So I was farming for the red line shotgun. It's kind of like a, it's like a Gatling gun looking shotgun. What? Yeah, so it's like a barrel. You just do 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 do. But it's and then shooting shotgun you reload. blast. You're Ooh, shooting shotgun okay. blast. That's um, scary. <laughs> so I got a shock one just for the Malawan takedown because um, it reminds me this of the one does. Storm. Yeah. This, I mean, it doesn't share the electric damage, but mm-hmm. I'm also farming for the uh, electric banjo, which is an okay. artifact that gives all your weapons that brainstorm ability. Which you wow. shoot one enemy, it'll share, it'll chain lightning to all of them. Oh, really? Okay. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be a crazy build that you put together on that. Yeah, so I'm farming for that. Uh, the Billies drop it. You know, you got Billy, Billy, and Billy yeah. from uh, Eden 6. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So farming them for that. Um, that with that, uh, shotgun is going to be pretty good. Oh, I can um, imagine. Cause I can imagine using the, the electric banjo on, um, my Maggie, which shares one bullet when you critical hit on it. Yep. So then that's electrocuting as well. Yeah. Chain into each, uh, to each enemy. Yeah. And then okay. when you, when you use that in conjunction with the redistributor, not only is every seventh shot, the amp shot. But you also every other shot is doing extra damage because of the chain lightning too. So that's ridiculous. So you just really stacking on the damage. All right, I that am, sounds awesome. That is going to be fun. I am I also was also. Oh, you will see it. Trust me, firsthand. <laughs> um, I was. Have you, have you ever won a duel against one of these guys yet? Because every time yes. I see you guys duel, <laughs> like oh, I'm glad up. you mentioned yes. that. <laughs> I've been on a I've been on a win streak. See, blue won't do me anymore. No, not no more. Because you have a nuke gun. <laughs> I, I don't use the nuke. I don't use the nuke. Yes, so I don't, don't need, a, the don't need a Geneva convention. No, so, um, <laughs> gamer did that to me. This okay, wait, wait, out. wait, wait. Now, so, I, I, I would like, I would like you to be significantly more specific. About that. So me, so Blue's like, you guys need to battle to see who's going to wear that skin. And I'm like, okay, cool, I'm down for that. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, so we're getting ready to fight. I'm not paying attention to what weapon he has out. Next thing I <laughs> Which know, is his problem. He, he shoots me with the ion cannon. Now, mind you, good thing I've been watching videos and stuff, so I know the ion cannon is the DLC. It's actually the most powerful weapon in the game. <laughs> so here I am out with a pistol, and this dude shoots me with a rocket launcher. So I was like, okay, we're going to battle again. This time, no heavies. We're you notice how do... he didn't say that he lost that word? <laughs> I didn't... Right, right. <laughs> right. He didn't hear <laughs> that part. He one-shot me with the ion cannon. So I'm like, okay. I don't have that weapon yet. We didn't start the DLC. <laughs> so I said, we're not going to do any heavies. No rocket launches, no heavies. No, so, so okay. Yes. He put conditions, conditions on it. Put conditions yeah. on it. So I said, okay, now we can fight. You can use assault rifles, pistols, whatever you want to use. And then so basically, guess who won for, that one? So For some strange reason, I was limited on the weapons that I could use. <laughs> I, didn't use I didn't use heavy. I didn't use heavy weapons. <laughs> I didn't tell you not to. <laughs> So I, I, said, I, I didn't stop you at all, good sir. And now the last two times me and Blue fought, I took for takeout. Oh, you talking about me? <laughs> no, nah, yeah, Bro, yeah. Don't worry about that. <laughs> nah, look, so now, I'm, I'm, I'm you already behind know. y'all. You already know that. <laughs> yeah. I'm so just now, the mascot. I just I don't even heal in the case. I don't even melee him. And then KC, you you can't melee somebody who doesn't play the game. So that just don't work. Like you can't oh, do somebody who doesn't play the game. That's strategy. That's actually very true. <laughs> no losses. <laughs> no losses. Oh, um, Zero losses. Zero wins. <laughs> besides that, I downloaded um um pillars um of attorney. Of attorney, yeah, and I want to try that this week. 
Oh, um, okay. Because that's a, that's a four-player game, too. It's kind of similar to, to Baldur's Gate. It has, like, a D&D type style, RPG okay. combat type CRPG. situation. So. I'm down. Say that again for me, please. A CRPG? I said I'm down. What does is, what is the C stand for? Computer. Oh. Okay, thank you. It's like um, <laughs> old school pen and paper based type. What? It's not as is that what, as that. What it's called? Yeah, that's the that's the, kind of the genre it's referred to as. CRPG? I feel like that's yeah. a made up. Genre. It's based off up. tabletop though. Right. That's, I'm gonna look that's, it up. That's what it means. Like computer as in like any like, video game? Like the like the text based type ones is kinda of like the source, but then those were also built from like the D D rule sets. It's it's a dumb lineage. Okay. But that's that's the term. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. No, I, I think you wait for it. No, I see what okay. you mean. I'm also waiting for there is a Magic the Gathering strategy game. Oh. That's gonna be on mobile. So I, I sent you the link. Did you? Oh oh yeah, oh, yeah. I signed up for that. Okay. The, the beta, right? Yes, I signed yes, up for I signed it. Up for that. So yeah. I'm waiting for that to come out. And besides like, that, another one? <laughs> mm-hmm. they have they have that coming out. They have a MOBA they're working on, and they have mm-hmm. the the um, ARPG coming out, the Diablo style yeah. MMO. Mm-hmm. Um, and I built. I'm working on my green and white deck this week. I almost have it like ninety percent done. All right, yeah, a lot of hype is going up about this new um, expansion that they. they yeah, you know, I know Mr. Fast Tax was on that like crazy. He was doing he did a series of videos, oh, um, on, on um, like, different builds and stuff like that. His on Arena. Like, no, he was doing it physically. Oh, that'd be pretty. Oh, cool. yeah. I might have to, might have to partner with him and do some of that. Most definitely, we, we can Check. we can uh, play each other on camera. That would be really cool. I would love yeah. to see you guys do that. That oh, be... you too. You ain't getting out of this. Uh, <laughs> oh, there we go. I'd love to see y'all do that. <laughs> that's cool, uh, that's all I've been playing. What about you, uh, Mr. B-Bones? Mr. B-Bones. I like that. <clears throat> um, what's going on, y'all? I've been doing primarily... Um, I do know a lot of Sword Art Online. I've, I've been talking <laughs> right, about the last yeah, couple of weeks. You pics from that. <laughs> it's getting better and better. This game is getting better and better. I'm and I... I think I, I know what it came it. down to. It. it comes down to I believe that this is probably the first anime looter shooter that I've ever played, and that. Well, yeah, I guess one literally based on an anime versus. Oh wait, he blew his <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! That's probably... yeah. right, okay, he's back. back. Okay, you're back. Uh, I was hearing y'all the whole time. <laughs> he was like, hey. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, what, where did I leave, leave off for you guys? Uh, so it's it the first looter shooter that you've played. First anime, anime, anime related. Shooter that you've ever played. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, and um, me watching the series alongside it is really enhancing the gaming experience. Now, the stories don't match up, but it's the same. Um, it's the same setting. If mm-hmm. that makes sense. Uh, and without getting into too much detail, in the anime series, the main character, Kirito, he joins the game once this villain, Death Gun, has done his first murder. Um, and it's kind of one of those deals where they kill you in the game to kill you in real life. And the okay. game, Kirito's already in the game playing with all his friends, and you just happen to join them through your childhood friend. And then later on, Death Gun shows up and you guys are concerned about it mm, gotcha. so i like that it's a little bit different yeah but they kind of contained it to just the gun gale online setting and, and i like it a lot um i'm learning i'm unlocking new skills and abilities and you actually have to put in a lot of work it's, it's fun it's fun though um mm. my characters are really coming into their class and and um really kicking butt i got a sniper who shoots this giant 50 cal? She don't like normally you can carry two weapons. I don't have her carrying a second weapon because the 50 cal is too heavy. Is that the sniper <laughs> to from carry the show? Thing. The girl C. I think so. I, I, it's not, it's not that one specifically, but it's close to it because I've been upgrading it too. Man, when I tell you they get hit by this, I'm talking bosses are getting pushed back by a crit hit from this sniper. So I got my NPC doing that, um, and it's really. It really helps with disruption and taking the attention off me so I can get back with my dual SMGs and finish off the job. Yeah, those dudes. Yeah, man. But on top of that, I've been playing some Borderlands. Um, and I haven't been playing it, but my girl's been playing a lot of Doom. 
Um, and I've been Ooh. watching her play. That game Doom is interesting. 2016. The late, the one that's on Game Pass right now. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Doom. Yeah. Okay. It's a 2016. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's just carnal. I think yeah. that's the word. It's just blood I, and gun. I jumped into that for a little bit uh, a while back. I think I was playing it on stream. I, I was I was doing it on what what is that? The nightmare difficulty. Oh gosh. <laughs> Not the hardest one, but like the second to. Yeah, they they don't play one. around. They yeah, do not that, play around. That game's tough. <laughs> it's rough. <laughs> but she's getting through it. And um, at, when we first looked at the trailer, I'm like, babe, that's not your kind of game. And she's like, just watch me. And she's getting through it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, I'm just going to have to shut up now. Uh, but I'm the, yeah, I'm and she's showing me. I ain't mad at her. Go on, girl. Um, on top of that, man, I've just been chilling, hanging with the folks, you know, running that Overwatch. They got the New Year's, um, Chinese New Year. Uh, event going on right what now. What year? But... What year? What's the year of it again? Year of the Rat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Year of the Jeff. The same thing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> oh boy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's supposed to be a big update coming up with Overwatch. Uh, there's a whole restructuring. We had the two, two, two before. They're going to a one, two, three. It's like one tank, two heals, three DPS. So that's going to so, be interesting. Is that an uh, additional option? Like you can do two, 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 or one, three. Two or is mm-hmm. it everyone can Just only that. now do one three two? Everyone's going to be standardized, and they're going to have the um you know the other modes available to play, like on quick play or private matches, right? But not not for, or not sorry, not quick play, arcade or private matches. But quick play and comp is going to switch to right now. The word on the street is going to switch to one two three. So we'll see how that goes. I Which love street? Overwatch. Huh? Which street is that? The word on? I'm just curious. Um, on the Jeff Shut Up Street. So, <laughs> thank you. I love that street. <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's a great Chinese um, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm looking forward to that. I, I love Overwatch because they're always tr- you they're actively trying to balance a game on a regular basis. So, um, and you can see it. You can feel the love they put into it. Every patch. Yeah, so. it's always evolving. But my question: yeah. When is the last time they released a new hero? That would be Ash, Sigma. I want to say. Oh, Sigma, Sigma excuse right? me. Yeah, Sigma, Sigma was the last. Matter of fact, I don't think they will release a new one until they drop the new game. Two at this point. So there was talks about the Junker Queen. The... Mm-hmm. Um, they also talked about the, about the robot chick, the AI. Yeah, they're talking about her too. I think she's showing up um, story wise. She's definitely showing up story wise in Overwatch 2, but I don't know about as a playable character. A lot of people are saying she might be an aerial character to kind of combat Farah, um, and kind of have someone else up in the sky, but um, we'll see. Okay, I'm not sure. It's all kind of rumors at this point. All right, I need, I need you to get some facts. <laughs> some report on those facts, please. <laughs> Let me go down that street one more time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's gonna do it for what we've been playing. That's this what week. we've been playing. Uh, we're going to move real quick into our Super Smash Sunday recap a- called Blue's News. Yeah. Take my blue. Blues. What's going on, everybody? Last week, we were celebrating the um, reveal <laughs> of Bylin, the latest Super Smash Brothers character, and we all decided to do Fire Come Emblem on. character. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's a game where you want know, that. I get it. There's not a whole bunch of hype for Byleth right now. His move set seems pretty interesting, but just the character itself, not too many people were hyped for it. Uh, but anyway, Fire Emblem characters. Um, it was kind of an even split around like win streaks and stuff like that. I personally went on a little bit of a win streak with Robin. Um, so I, I, you know, I'll give myself a little shout out. I got like three, four wins in a row. But other than that, you, like you were doing your thing with Robin. It was. Pretty much, and I, I rewatched it too just to make sure. Most most folks won one or two matches and then got switched off because they were all super close and um, going back and forth. So that was actually a lot more fun than I anticipated. But yeah, you trying know, new characters. Yeah, we should do that more often. <laughs> okay, I try new characters all the time. <laughs> and we know okay. Jeff Jeff constantly switches. Every character so. is new to you. For it's Jeff, not really a sacrifice. If, if the character doesn't have RNG, <laughs> Jeff don't want to play. It. Right? Exactly. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, that's no. what it is. No. It's, uh, it's the what? RNG king is Mr. Game and Watch. No, it's not. No, he's yeah, you're just mad because the Game and Watch beat you. <laughs> but let's keep it pushing. <laughs> 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 that's the Super Smash Brothers news of the week. Um, yeah, like I said, no one really like 
ran the table last week, and that, that's, that's nice too. You know what I mean? You never really know which way the match is going to go. So we're looking forward to more um, great battles this coming week. And I think I'm going to play Robin again. I'm not going to lie, because um, <laughs> yeah, I was kind of getting the I had hang fun of it. with Corin. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's it. So we're going to move now into our topics for the week. First up, uh, we got some news from. Kojima Productions, uh, Hideo Kojima himself has stated, unsurprisingly, that um, his studio would be interested in making anime, manga, and also some smaller, you know, smaller size video games. Not a big, huge thing like <laughs> Death Stranding, but, you know, smaller experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys take on Kojima Productions kind of being a multimedia studio rather than just a game studio? I, I think it's amazing. Um, I think why not? You know what I'm saying? They've done great stories in the past, especially drama um, and espionage. Um, why not do more? Let's see it. If I could see, if if I can see the saga of Big Boss, but as an anime, I would watch that almost religiously. Uh, now that I think about it, if I can get something <laughs> to that level, because the stories of Metal Gear on its own are just bananas <laughs> and most of the time just don't make any sense but then <laughs> if i don't but then but wait if i don't have to pay enough attention where i'm like playing the game and i'm just like purely watching it i can try to sit there and absorb everything so yeah i gotta agree with blue let let me let me have that any what do you think jeff yeah any thoughts? So i'll be this other side of the coin there um so everybody's favorite villain <laughs> right of course gotta so... be different um, I think the potential is there, but also you have to think about this is an area where unless he's hiring people that are already established in anime and manga, then it's something very new to them. Just making a beautiful anime doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a good anime. Oh, okay. There's been beautiful, there's been great looking anime, there's been, you know, very low budget anime. But the story was there, the action was there, so it shined through. Um, I think we get that with Death Stranding, where there's so many mixed reviews, where that game is just so beautiful. Some people feel the story is there, some people feel like it isn't. Some people feel the gameplay is there, some people feel like it isn't. But with manga and anime, you have to be very, very precise with what you're trying to do. I mean, for example, look at One Piece. There's been breadcrumbs that have been laid out years ago that are just now coming to fruition. So you have to make sure that you pretty much know what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, just like somebody who just makes anime or makes manga wouldn't necessarily make a good video game. So it goes both ways. So you got to make sure that you have some people who are established in making anime and manga and maybe consult some people. I mean, hopefully, I, I'm sure they have a lot of good examples. You know what I mean? Give and me one. No, I mean, like, what Are do they believe that? good anime oh, is? Okay. I think okay. Kogiats is an amazing anime. I just re- finished rewatching that. You That's know what true. I mean? Um, the, I think the ending is actually absolutely perfect for the whole journey. But um, mm. if they get to anime that they think is good and they see responds like people respond well to, and they don't copy. Mm. But they use similar strategies as far as artwork goes and action um, mm-hmm. and pacing. Then I think they'll be good to go. I don't think because yeah, mine, he can't use any of the no Metal Gear unless he yeah, gets he that license, doesn't... and they're not gonna they're not gonna give him anything like that or right. you know. Even, I, mean, I, um, I am sure. Does he have sure Silent he Hill? Do... He can't even do Silent no, no, no. Hill yeah, that's still anything. underneath yeah. Konami as well. Yeah, but um, my honestly, I I, I agree with, with where Jeff is coming from. Like, Ko- Kojima's a, a brilliant mind, and he's a really good, like, visionary game director. But um, I kind of felt like with Death Stranding, he may have gotten a little up his own butt. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's like, he's... It was experimental. Sure, it was definitely for sure, for sure. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, like, I, you could really tell, like, this was all him. Like, he kind of had full reign and control and if that's how his studio is going to function then that could be problematic for other mediums as well like clearly the man is a film buff like he loves movies he loves you know hollywood stuff like that 
he wanted to make a movie like he 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 said before this that he wanted uh, Kojima Productions to also look into making actual movies and stuff. But the same thing with anime is like if you're if you have an ambitious story and especially with anime because anime can get really really out there. If he feels emboldened mm-hmm. to kind of just tell the wildest story possible without bringing anything down to earth, you know, blowing animation budgets on, you know, just making things visually interesting or whatnot, like you're kind of you're gonna end up with kind of all of the style with none of the substance, and hmm. when you're when when you have a video game to fall back on, a lot of times your story can slide by on being all style and substance because the gameplay is the actual <coughs> meat holding everything together. You know what I mean? If you're mm-hmm. taking that away entirely and the focus is just all on the feel and the style, then like you could end up with something just like that feels like sand in your hands. Like <laughs> like like maybe it's pretty like maybe it's a little sparkly, maybe it feels okay to the touch, but like this really has no merit, no substance, nothing there's nothing here. And that that's what I'm worried about for Koji. Like I I'm definitely interested to see what, you know, they can come out with. Cuz you know those ideas are there. Like yeah. Metal Gear is very anime like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But so that's know, that's also really what I'm game. excited for. It's not a standalone story, you know, it's a video game. <laughs> but you know, kind of like what I was saying earlier, I'm watching Sword Art Online 2 mm-hmm. and I'm playing the game. And while they followers follow similar <laughs> storylines i think they're both good um and you know they're coming from similar they're, they're coming from the same setting so mm-hmm. hopefully um kojima can learn or has already figured out how to make game stories anime stories I because guess we'll see. They, they can't be the same they can't be the same they we shall different. see yeah. very different mediums yeah. Different skills. We'll be waiting on uh, more from that front. Yeah, we're looking. We're we're standing by though. We're looking forward to that. And I and I'd also be very interested to see what a smaller uh, Kojima game looks like because it's it's been yes. a very long time since um he's had, he's done anything like that. Like remember Boktai? The the no no the the DS the not DS the Game Boy Advance game where it had like a solar sensor in it. You had to play yes, out in the sun. I do remember that. Um, the the sun is in your hand or yes. something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That and was a good to... joint. That was oh, a small sun. Kojima game. <laughs> that was such a good thought. <laughs> right, like that. Like I want to see. I want to see more there weird, was an innovative ideas like that. Huh. That was a really good thought. <laughs> it was a cool little game too. Got a lot in common. <laughs> That game specifically, actually, now you mention it, used to annoy me back in the day because I, I used to run a Game Boy emulator, mm-hmm. and you cannot get sun from a Game Boy <laughs> emulator. <laughs> I'm not gonna be outside with my laptop trying to catch. It, it doesn't work. Um, so but, uh, yeah, no, screw that game, bro. Screw that game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so screw well, Kojima. We go. We're gonna move on now uh, to some a little politics. Uh, Man. Oh, okay. I am Democratic presidential candidate and former vice president Joe Biden apparently um called uh some game devs he referred to game devs as little creeps who make titles that teach you how to kill. <clears throat> so, uh there's a little bit more context to the story, but I believe Gamer you're the one who like brought this to our attention, right? Yes. Um, I also cover, uh, Yes, so I also covered this on my podcast. That was actually a very small snippet that came from a New York Times interview where Joe Biden was asked a series of questions. And the comment of the little creeps was not specifically about video games, but it turned out that it was more about when um, when Joe Biden went to speak to the people of Silicon Valley about their technological advances. And the um, the question was actually... Under the Obama administration, Silicon Valley's power actually expanded greatly. There are very few mergers blocked. Do you have any regrets about that? And in the explanation, he spoke about how 70% of the time he was able to get the president at the time, President Obama, on his side, and 30% of the chance he was not. 
and he was working on an agreement with the leaders of Silicon Valley. And then there comes the quote, one of the little creeps sitting around at that table was a multi close to a billionaire who told me he was an artist because he was able to come up with games to teach you how to kill people. <laughs> now, it was obvious the developer didn't say that. This is just what Joe Biden had said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was significantly um, disappointing to hear from him only because it showed how ignorant and small-minded he is about the... the I, I think I can call this an art form of video games mm -hmm. because yeah. if the... First thing that you think of is video games that teach you how to kill people. Well, yes, you don't know. <laughs> you, there, there's a few things like because first of all, and um, I have very little experience with this, but I don't think there is a video game on the market that actually teaches you how to kill people. GTA doesn't teach you how to kill, and under no circumstances can you just do things in that game and there aren't repercussions. Like if you try to yeah. hold up a store. Yes, you're going to get shot back. If you try to steal someone's stuff, yes, you're going to get shot back. There, there is they'll like put a bounty on you. <laughs> yeah, they'll put a bounty on you, and then your friends will try to kill you. Um, but that. It, it, that that just kind of it, it was just really disappointing for that to be just like yes, video game. Like again, the 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 time old thing. Video games are bad. Um, there was also a time where he tried to propose a violent video game tax. Which yeah, I remember hearing about this. Like it's, really, it's just pure ignorance, like just complete lack yeah. of understanding, lack of an attempt to understand. There we go. Because I, you you can Google like Undertale, uh, uh, Undertale, um, Cooking Mama. Think of a lot of Nintendo games in their own way. You don't, you aren't really killing people. But Not you're nice. going to, like, your attack for a video game developer that creates a medium that you don't understand is, oh, he's a little creep that just makes games to teach you how to, how to kill people. As if video games have never helped anyone at all <laughs> in, in any way, shape, or form. It's I do like, want not, to, not to defend Joe Biden, but I yeah. do feel like a lot, of, a lot of that sentiment may have come out because of maybe specifically the person who was in that room that he got a vibe from. Like, it, the, the interview came off to me as if whoever was in that room talking to him about this stuff, who was a rep from Silicon like. Valley, yeah, like he probably was kind of a smug a hole or something. And that probably. was, and he just rubbed mm -hmm. Joe Biden the wrong way to the point where he's still kind of salty about it. But it did, it did annoy him enough to where he basically blurted out, Oh, he makes like he's an artist because he makes things that teach people how to kill. Like, cause that's his underlying thought. Like, he does yeah. believe that violent video games are, you know, detrimental in that way that they can have that kind of potential, which is dumb and wrong. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. so it's good that that at the very least it brought out his true feelings about that thing. But honestly, to be fair, he is an old man. Joe Biden is yeah. a boomer. He does yeah. not understand video games. At the very least. What he could do is leave it to somebody else as opposed to try and, you know, try and institute this thing or that thing, put a tax on a violent thing, even though there's no evidence to support the thing. Like, that's just a bias in your head. And like, and we've known, like, there have been articles that basically show that Joe Biden has a kind of a old school mindset in a lot of different yeah, regards. Yeah, he definitely does. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's, it's good that this information is out there, but I just want to... I just want to put it in the proper context. He's context, an old man. Yeah. Like, like that. Old, like old people are gonna say dumb stuff. <laughs> and uh, that's, I don't think that's fair. But, uh, <laughs> Oops. but, but, somewhat to your point, uh -huh. it does scare me that there is not someone with updated information in his ear, and he wants to be a president. He wants to be a president. Mm -hmm. Um. So that's that's the concerning part for me. It's just you know. How are you still spouting this BS? How do you not have updated info on this? You know, it, it sounds like he has no young person, no person under 
45. Or, or at, <laughs> at the very least, he's not listening to any of them. So even if they yes. are around, and they're like, hey, look, this means that in the third, he's still sticking to what he believes. Which is so, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So it's it's it sucks. It sucks to see that, you know, and um, he wants to run this country. So, Oops. We'll, you know, I mean, we'll see. You know, there's pros and cons to everybody. So let's let's on the gaming side, it sucks that he did that. We're not going to talk about our presidential picks <laughs> 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 on the gaming side. Yeah, it sucks that he did that. It sucks that he was so small minded and he's attacking this industry as um, many of the boomer generation tends to do. I mean, Jeff, how you feel, bro? Yeah, anything left to say about Joe Biden? I, get, I think you guys kind of just summed it all up. I was just absorbing all that information. Out of the crowd, <laughs> man. Gamer already had his his whole spill since he covered it on his podcast. So I was just interested to see everybody's take on it. I mean, he was sitting there much. with popcorn, like, mm, yeah, dang, this just is like good. Mm, he said, yeah. "What? Oh mm-hmm. no!" <laughs> now, usually, I like to be the the contrast to what you guys say, but no, that was pretty much it felt the same way. Yeah. Um, it's hard to. It, it Hard could have been personal, but it did show a uh, underlining uh, bias against the video game industry, which has been going for a long time. Yeah, I have close to zero doubt that that guy was a jerk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the person he was talking about was probably being some sort of jerk, but and that's and that's that's what happens when you make impressions yeah, and you represent, you know, a, a whole industry bigger than you, like. Now you've painted everyone as kind of exactly like the United States. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) But anyway, we're gonna move on to our next topic. Um, I believe Blue, you brought this one up to us. Ooh, y'all trying to get us kicked off the air? (laughs) Uh, The the long-awaited Obi Wan Kenobi show. Oh, I bet that bro. Definite. That was you, Jeff. I think I put it in. I think I think he put it in as well. It's okay. We can share. They put the Kenobi series on on hold. It's not canceled. It's right? on indefinite hold. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, they call it an indefinite. The person who they forward the script up to from that works for Lucas Films. Yeah, her name was Jackie something. I'm, don't get me wrong. Um, she was not happy with the script, so they put a pause on everything. Uh, like, apparently, there was staff already like hired and. That yeah, they like dismiss them all. They dismiss the whole cast, and you know, um, this is the, the thing. It what sucks is that Aaron McGregor was involved mm-hmm. in this, and we was all super hyped for it. You know, he he played an excellent Obi Wan in the movies. Um, yeah, I think he gives homage to the original Obi Wan very well. But it's just it just sucks that uh, this is all kind of falling down because of a bad script. It's and at at the same time, I'm happy that it's falling down because of a bad script. And I'm saying that because that means they're not putting out crap. Yeah, yeah like they have their time. That is true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they got standards. They say, hey, look, if it's not to the Star Wars storytelling standard, we're not doing it. Yes. So, in a large now, way, it sucks. In a better way, it's I'm good. Happy. Yeah. Now, the, the what does that mean for Disney Plus? Because they're hurting for content right yes, now. Yes, you're absolutely right. So for Disney Plus, they need to start pushing something. Because they canceled big. Hawkeye. Yep. I didn't even hear about that. They canceled because, it. Yeah, I that like Randall. went across my screen. The Hawkeye thing. Yes, he had some allegations about, uh, I believe, abuse of some sort. Oh, Celestia. For real? Yeah, it hasn't been um, proven or anything yet, but. It don't need Dis- to be. Yeah, you work for Disney. Di- yeah, I guess it is. So Hawkeye's canceled. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier's been uh, pushed back. I oh, think I goodness. saw some set shots from that, though. Yeah. And they, they they had some. I think something happened where they pushed it back a little bit further as well. Uh, and then now the Kenobi. The next thing is the WandaVision, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. <laughs> WandaVision's sweating right now. Uh, I mean, maybe I, I will come st- out and save the day. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, but I think you're you're right, Jeff. Disney Plus right now is struggling. Um, the Kenobi series, I know it spiked a lot of interest in people to, you know, they, their free trial was done for the Mandalorian, so uh, they were actually going to purchase it this time around. But right now, 
I don't see why I'm keeping um I, honestly I have Disney Plus because um I got a year free with my Verizon um cell phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, right? So that's why I got it. If I was paying month to month and I finished watching The Mandalorian, I'd probably cut it off. Because right now I don't see I don't see any reason to have it. Yeah, I haven't. I, go yeah. back. Every and now that, and then I watch the new DuckTales because I think it's actually really funny. I should do that. But, I love the um, music. <laughs> yeah, the music is great. I love Donald Duck, but we'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like... <laughs> I like Donald Duck. <laughs> he's, he's, um, he's a sailor like me, and he gets yeah. angry. But they run into the same problem that the D- uh, DC Universe streaming service ran into. Ran out of content. The, the difference is they put... Watch. Yeah, they came out with Young Justice. But they have more original content than Disney Plus. Yeah, they do have more. to do right now, yeah. They definitely yeah. do. Titans and, and, is actually a lot better than I expected. Told you. <clears throat> told you. Um, <laughs> oh, dear. That Harley Quinn show is actually really good. Like, it it's really hilarious, good. and I'm not done with it. I'm trying to take my time because I don't know. That might have saved right them. Now. That might have saved them. That and Titans, I could see them yeah. saving them. Uh, Swamp Thing was really good, too, even though that didn't get reviewed for budgeting reasons for some unknown yeah, reason. Yeah, that sucks. Um, and then they had Doom Patrol, which wasn't bad. Um, everything they had on there has been pretty good. Um, it's just they didn't have a lot to start out with that made you want to keep it. So like Young Justice, they put out a couple episodes, took a break, mm. Mm. then brought it back. Mm. The difference is Disney Plus, while I'm not complaining, The Mandalorian came out every week. Week by week. So when it was done, they should have something to... They should have something else like that. They really should have. Exactly. Because yeah. that's what HBO some... did. They had Game of Thrones finish off, and what happened right after that? Watchmen. True. Yeah. A lot of folks was watching Watchmen, and that was a really good series. So yeah. I don't know what they're about to put out next, but you I know I should watch it. You gotta have overlapping <laughs> original content. Exactly. Because just watching or the very old close stuff, together. Yeah, just watching the old stuff only takes you so far. Mm-hmm. Nope. Agreed. Yeah, man. So, R.I.P. Kenobi for now. Hopefully, I know it says indefinitely. I don't believe indefinitely because well, it's not canceled. If you stop, <laughs> stop failing people. Yeah, they um, just mean they're not when they when they say indefinitely. It just means like they they haven't until given they get a better script. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's a project that's still in the ether. Like here, go, go rewrite this. You're like, we'll revisit this in the future, I guess. So, <laughs> but we're gonna move on into uh, more future plans. Konami, yes. the often disgraced. Game, game publisher. <laughs> Apparently, there are rumors that they are working on bringing back the Silent Hill series with two new games. One, we all um, on Silent Hill. I played Silent Hill. Um, after I actually watched the movie, I went back and played it again. Mm-hmm. The movie was bad; it wasn't terrible, <laughs> but it did make me want to go back and finish the game because I didn't finish it initially. Um, but. While I'm not excited about Silent Hill, I am excited that it is kind of revitalizing a almost a dead genre. The whole horror survival genre was almost dead. Yeah. Uh, besides Resident, Resident Evil. Evil. Resident Evil yeah. was really thing holding is, it down. And that's used to the, have thing. the thing. I think that's what might be the spurring reason, this, yeah, yeah. sparking Konami's renewed interest. Because that uh, remake, Resident Evil 2 remake, did so well. And seven did well too. And yeah, seven before it actually did really well. And now three coming out. True. So Konami, and this this is what I think is the most interesting about this story. Konami doesn't necessarily seem to care about honing the development themselves. They they're happy owning the IP and just publishing it. They ba- basically put feelers out and said, "Who has an interesting idea for Silent Hill for us?" So basically, they're asking developers to pitch Silent Hill games. And whichever one they think is the most interesting, they'll probably they go with that. Yeah, they'll put the so they're trying to the get money in. based based on nostalgia, pretty much. Not really. Well, no, no, no. Like, well, they, no. Yeah, it does Innovative. seem like they're interested in revitalizing the actual franchise, but they, want to they themselves, it. yeah, they themselves, they're just gonna oh, they license want... it out. Like, they're not, they're not I gonna do you. it in house, which I think is a good idea. Like, there are other Konami, you know, uh, IPs that Telltale you can... Games. Oh, been, that's not a bad idea. No, because hopefully the, this oh. particular license wouldn't cost them as much as they've been paying for the ones they paid mm-hmm. for before. That kind of made them go bankrupt. I mean, the that, would, for that actually would be really the interesting. The Walking Dead, Game of Thrones, 
this could be a lower budget license that could pay off a lot better than people would definitely buy it. There's lots yeah. of Telltale game fans that um, that I think Silent Hill would fit directly into that genre. Just like you said, The Walking Dead was. In my opinion, the Telltale games for The Walking Dead should not have gone as far as it did. I didn't <laughs> like them at all, but I appreciate that other people did like it. So that being said, if they can put that same energy into Silent Hill, bro, they got a winning strategy right there. Because honestly, yeah, I I don't I've never played an actual Silent Hill game, but I do know like they're very revered in the survival horror genre. Mm-hmm. Like the thing that I've understood about survival horror is that it takes power and agency away from the player in order to scare mm-hmm. them by putting them in like precarious situations yeah. a, a very <clears throat> narrative heavy telltale type game could that could do a lot of that it could definitely oh, yeah. put you in situations where you're not where it's in not control. big on gameplay you're not in control yeah. and they just put you in the scenarios and make you make decisions that can be harrowing that sounds like it could actually work really well mm-hmm. yeah I do not do horror games at all. <laughs> and um, I would be more inclined to do a Telltale series of a horror game than an action Than like series. an actual I, action. Okay. Yeah, my heart's too weak for that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. but some secret neighbor you're okay with. <laughs> Barely, but it's y'all. I don't care about y'all running Because it reminds me of oh, his neighbor. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what what are some other Konami franchises that you think... They'd want to maybe shop out to other developers if this is a thing that becomes big for them. Like, there's, you know, Metal Gear, which is still owned by Konami. True. There's, uh, dang, what's the name of it? Zone of the Enders? Oh, my yeah. goodness. That's going back. That's a bullet hell game, right? Is that what they call it? I think so. Um, I forget. Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's, like, what they call the genre. I'm totally blanking on Konami IPs, though. Yo. Yeah, that's right. Oh, they have Pro Evolution Soccer. Frogger. <laughs> Frogger? What you know about Frogger? Yeah, no, 1981. Z- uh, Zone of the Enders was more uh, Gundam fights. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It was, like, okay. It was, it was yeah. it played similar like uh, was that Panzer Dragoon? The way the, the combat was. I do remember that. Okay. 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 So like an on rails shooter, like Star Fox. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you played well, as a Gundam. You mentioned Boktai earlier. Right, that, um, is, that would also be on a Konami, but I don't, think, I don't think that IP is very valuable at this point. <laughs> I don't think so either. It'll be cool to see a different version of it, though. Um, yeah, I, I'm Samaria. just happy. Say, oh, you're right, Castlevania. Castlevania. That's the main one. That is the main oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Now, I liked Lords of Shadow, the first one, and the second one wasn't bad, but the first one was pretty. It was definitely a difficult and, and fun game and a new spin on it. Um, I think they successfully transitioned from the platformer into the 3D okay. combat, uh, RPG. So if you haven't played that, that is actually a game. Cool. That's good to know. And with the Netflix series coming out, it would be a perfect time for a, uh, a t- well, not synergy. maybe a tie-in, but uh, yeah, exactly, to get more excitement into Castlevania. But, I mean, it's probably a while from now. They haven't said anything about New Castlevania stuff. It was supposed to come. Oh, you mean like a game? Yeah, no, yeah. they haven't mentioned it. Just, Just some, some remakes of uh, the older ones. Mm-hmm. Remasters. And speaking I of have, remasters. I mean, we still have Bloodstain, so. True. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Iga, the actual original Castlevania creator. But mm-hmm. on the topic of remakes, EA apparently yes. is looking to do a remake of Star Wars Knights of the Old republic now yeah. since I just talked about this last week no 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 i just talked about this last week all right so clearly both these guys are excited <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how Let do you feel about you. this news i think it's good news like blue said um with the introduction of certain um stuff that could be canon in the whether that's um um, the last Star Wars movie or The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great time. Uh, and I'll pass this over to uh, Mr. B-Bones. Yo, we've been talking about and, and most Star Wars fans, especially the extended universe Star Wars fans have been talking about Knights of the Old Republic. Or I should just say the Old Republic um, time period in general. 
we want to see a revamp. We want to see a revamp. We've been talking about this for a long time. Every time you hear Revan, everyone's oh crap, is it coming? Um, so it's ha- coming. I, well, is that name that is a character from Knights of the Old Republic, correct? Yes. And the name Revan so far has been mentioned in current canon. Like, is that true or no? Oh no. Uh, events surrounding the character that he has taken yeah. place in has mentioned. But not yeah. not that they're they're kind of beating name. around the bush. Okay, they're yeah. beating around so the bush. So like a lot right of now. clues, but not an outright. Not him. Person. Not yeah. there yet. Gotcha. Yeah. No, nothing confirmed yet. So that's why that's another reason why this remake, um, or yeah, I'll call it a remake because yeah, I'm pretty they're sure they're going. Yeah. yeah, they're going to change up some of the story. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So um, from if I could just go into the article a little bit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like apparently, what they want to do is combine One events two, right? from. The first and second game into mm-hmm. a new continuity, continuity, continuity. How do, what's the word I'm looking for? Continuity. Continuity. There you go. Yeah, got you, bro. <laughs> we got this. Teamwork makes a dream. To work, a new baby. continuity that then brings all of that stuff into the current canon because the mandate from Disney, Star Wars, or whatnot, basically Ooh, says that's everything right. that's released in the Star Wars universe has to be canon. So this would yeah. essentially save all that old Republic stuff. And make it fit nicely into today's Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I will say I love that they're doing this because they, they st- I feel like they had a messy desk and they're like, look, we got all these stories. I so many to clean it up. Like, okay, we're gonna put this here. These go in the trash, and we're gonna make everything new is gonna go into this folder and it's gonna be canon. And it's gonna be good, and everyone's gonna take a look at it. That's I how like I played out in your head. That's exactly <laughs> how it played out in my head, and I like that they're cleaned up shop. <laughs> Because it's, waste, it's a wasted property that they're not utilizing until it's full potential. That is, right now. That's such sure a great true. story. It's such a great story. But um, I, I do want to point out angles. that this isn't just a great idea for Star Wars. This is a good idea for EA, period. Because remember, what what have they been doing? Like, What are their IPs? We just talked about this last week. Like, What are their known IPs and stuff that make you want to buy like an EA game or think about EA in general? Like, honestly, all their best work is in the past. So just like Capcom with their uh, Resident Evil remake and now Konami also looking at the past, why Mm -hmm. wouldn't EA also say, okay, this was a good game from our history. Let's remake it. I think we'll see more. Matter of fact, I think there was a news story that came out about um, EA looking to remake. uh... Why am I blanking now on the game? Uh Uh-oh. NBA Jam? Nah. <laughs> I don't think... S- S- SSX Tricky. Right, right. SSX, it was SSX Tricky. Oh. Right. That's no. Thank you. <laughs> and that was no. more cool than I, facts. S- it's a rumor. S- uh, oh, please let it be true. Tricky. <laughs> but, but, that's, but Gamer's Reaction is exactly what EA wants. Like, all yeah. those older games that have their tagline on it, if they do it a good... If they do it this good service of giving it a decent remake, they will immediately be back in everyone's good graces. Yeah. They just have to try not not to suck. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Easy on the DLCs. Easy on the um, uh, microtransactions. Microtransactions. Thank you, guys. Look at that teamwork. I love that. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, if they just, you know... Ease up on that. Focus on the story. Focus on the gameplay. We'll buy it. I promise you, we'll buy it. You ain't got to make extra money off mm-hmm. off of that um, for us to to jump in. Um, it's the truth. There's there's so much there's so much good narr- uh, narratives that have not only come out of the books uh, for the Old Republic, but like we said, Knights of the Old Republic games, and then the Old Republic MMO has really good stories too that all happen around the same time so they have plenty of content yeah i'm excited about the new canon and what they're going to incorporate in that yeah it's going to be great i'm yeah, excited. I, I just want to see ea kind of get back on their feet i know everybody likes to hate them but i i want game i want companies that make video games to do well yeah that's all. <laughs> exactly yeah. Look the at more you. competition the better right just stop stop being jerks about it Mm-hmm. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to move into... Uh, well, that was the last of our topics, rather. We're going to hey. move into um, our Get to Know Us section. It's been a while since we've done this. We have all four hosts here. So hey. we're going to ask everyone, what is your favorite Guilty Pleasure TV show? 
<laughs> like what is a TV show, an anime, cartoon, uh, whatever I'll, I'll that you first. maybe don't want to advertise you watch all the time, but you actually watch it all the time? Um, I'll go first. Okay. So, I mean, I do advertise watch it, but a lot of people hate it uh, and they hate on it. Is and, this, and anything with Superman in it? It doesn't stop me from enjoying it. So it's, it's, the, it's the Arrowverse. I love the Arrowverse. With oh, okay, arrow. gotcha. Oh man, <laughs> Flash. No, that's a good one. <laughs> Black Lightning. I watch them all. Um, I don't watch really Legends anymore, but I do. The trifectas: Arrow, Flash, and uh, Black Lightning. Um, people hate it. I love it. I, I felt like <laughs> I think there's a lot of people no, that like yeah, it. Though. There are a lot of fans, but the thing is, a lot of fans also fell off because those shows kind of jumped up and down in quality from season to season. But you also have people who've never watched it who just hate on it just because. Yeah, like, and you also got people that watched it like me the first couple episodes and thought this was crap. <laughs> you, can't watch, you can't watch something for a couple episodes. I definitely can. And, and form an educated opinion. If it's not decent by the third or fourth episode, it's not worth my time. I mean, I can't argue with that. that that's a lot of... That's, that's Casey, like when you hours. watch it, anything for like four episodes, you wait till like oh. two years later. You're right, because if it's good, I don't want to have to wait a whole another week to get the rest of the plot to play out. Okay? So you're good to watch Arrowverse then, because... That, honestly, that's what I d- used to do with those shows. I would wait for those seasons to either get to like their halfway point or like finish, and then I'd watch them all the way through, and then I'd be like, you know what, this was actually a bad season. <laughs> and then I would, and then I'd feel less motivated to do the next one. But then I would maybe test it out, or like you know, they would do like their crossover event, so I would catch up real fast. But like, oh, you know what? This act, this season was actually a lot better than the last one. <clears throat> but with I definitely see with Arrow specifically, fluctuate. like Arrow's quality was just all over the place. Like they would have like one decent season, then a really bad season, then like an okay season, then like an awful season, and then okay, this season was a lot better, and then this one is just garbage. So like I was like I'm tired of this roller coaster. I'm getting off this ride. <laughs> like Flash used to be a lot more consistent, and then that just kind of kept going down. So I just I just swore off all of it. Black Lightning was okay at first, and then it bored me, and I was like I'm not gonna buy Black it. Lightning is amazing. And then with the new after the multiverse conversion, this is gonna be interesting. Yeah, I, think. I do want to still see that, Unfold. so I might watch just the no, 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 no. If, you, if you're not gonna be with them in the bad times, you can't be there. To- <laughs> try, try to oh stop man! Me. All right, there we go. <laughs> Try to stop me. <laughs> okay, so that so, that was your all right. That was my guilty pleasure. Blues is Cameron? scandal. Oh me? <laughs> scandal? scandal? Scandal's not bad. No, I'm playing. Um, it got bad. Yeah. No, I like. I loved the first couple of seasons. Um. Yeah, it's just at the end of the day, it's like, what do you want? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, we're not talking about skin. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how many times sat this? How many times did they sit this girl down, and they said, "What do you want?" And it's like, Ooh, I don't know, but I'll just screw up everyone's life. Um, <laughs> That's Shonda. My guilty pleasure, and um, I think it's more. A lot of people don't know about it, and if they did see it, they'd be probably bored out their minds. Um, and I've talked to you guys about this. I love Down Abbey. That is a <laughs> really good show. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've only heard good things about Down Abbey. So, but, but that's yeah, a good guilty pleasure. It doesn't seem like... That's the thing. Like, you don't hear about Down Abbey a lot, but when you do, anyone who watches it, like, yo, that show is a roller coaster. And it's the writing is great. And I actually watched the movie with my girl in theaters. It was great. It was just a whole long episode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you a fan fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Like, the thing, you know, if, if y'all don't know, it's a show about a British nobility, uh, noble family mm-hmm. going through the transition. Um, it's in the 1919, so right after Titanic. And right, it starts right before World War One. It sees, you see them going through World War One. And then the aftermath and how um, England specifically was changing um, with the hierarchies and what nobility really meant. Because, you know, it start, right now, nobility don't really mean anything. You know what I mean? In, in 2020. It means something, but, mm-hmm. like... Not as much as it meant back then. Not nearly as much as it meant back in the day. You know, I don't cower in fear if someone's noble. I'm like, oh, cool. That's that noble dude. You know? Um, <laughs> <laughs> ain't no bae. Hey, no bae. <laughs> 
no, but it's just like um, it. You see that whole transition, and I think one of the things that most of the fans of Downton Abbey love is that it's not just about the royal, or the the noble family. It's more about the servants and their life experiences and how they had to live through this transition, through the war, and mm-hmm. through just you know the 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 economic turmoil that mm-hmm. happened um in the early 1900s so it's definitely a period piece it's very well done very well written that's my guilty pleasure show and i don't know if i'm there i'm not really guilty about it but i know a <laughs> lot of folks don't don't mess with that show at I'm all i'm one of them who look down when you're watching it <laughs> but that's okay mr gamer mr gamer all right so i feel like this is just a very common thing uh, my weeb is showing uh, there with you this go. one um, so there's a particular anime that I have seen so many times back and forward. I just, I will, um, uh, it's something I watch a whole lot of and, um, <sighs> you look like you're about to cry. <laughs> right? <bro. laughs> I can't believe I did this. I'm, I'm so ready for this. What's it? Monster Masume. Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> So you've watched this it's, show multiple times. I yeah, yeah, just uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so why, why, why it's on in the living room? Why right don't you now. let um, some of the audience who maybe doesn't know what that show is? <laughs> yeah, give us a little premise on. That. All right, so um, PG premise, <laughs> of course. Um, so uh, Monster Masume um, is about uh, this guy, regular. Regular non powerful anime protagonist, yeah. and he is uh taxed with taking care of these um monster girls. Um, and it's a variety of episodes where you have a harpy, you have a slime, you have a centaur, um, you have a snake, a spider, a, a variety of, 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 of different type of monsters that he had that he is tasked with taking care of. And it's just the unfortunate shenanigans that happen with that. Like um, there is a the snake woman. Her name is Mia, and Mia wants to go get clothes, mm-hmm. but she's you know from the lower part, from the chest down, she's a snake. So <laughs> you can uh, you can obviously put two and two together that there are certain clothes that she may not. Um, be able to purchase. She's just wearing that, skirts, right? Um, Is that what she do? What? She just wears skirts? Well, yeah. Yeah, she just wears skirts. <laughs> he said, <laughs> quote, yeah. She just wears skirts. And um, <laughs> kind of like the biggest scene that like made me like really like this is, remember, this, this the uh, male protagonist, he's not special at all or anything like that. And some people are making fun of him and Mia as they're going out. Like, you know, why would that snake girl need to be going to buy anything? And then all of a sudden, he just gets the power of all for one and just knocks this guy and the woman and the other woman into the wall. <laughs> and, so and and everything like that. Defending and, Monster Girl Honor? Correct. And... um. <laughs> I think the best way that I can properly uh, summarize yes, this like anime that. is the intro of, of of this anime is I think it's seven all seven of the monster girls in some sort of wedding attire. Oh, and there's a mermaid too, but the mermaid because she's out of water is in a wheelchair. But that's something else too. <laughs> um, oh my goodness! <laughs> they're all <laughs> they're all in wedding attire, pointing their fingers up shooting what seems to be a huge love beam at this guy. You can fill in the blanks from there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do, Phil. I can see indeed. why you'd be guilty for watching that. <laughs> shame, That's shame, one of those shame. animes that, like, if you pause it at the wrong spot, your mom's gonna be like, for real, dude. What is this? <laughs> like, 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 every other scene was, like, action and everything, and then you got yeah. that the girl has fallen and a bucket of water has spilled all over. Yeah. Exactly. Just that one, that one still, just boom, that's all you see. Mr. Sigma, I'm Mr. interested Sigma. to see your guilty pleasure. Um, I have Is a it, no. couple. 
is a celebrity goat matches. That's not even a thing. It what? Is. <laughs> I'm surprised. I'm so mad at your brain. Like, can just formulate yeah. that kind of nonsense. <laughs> like, what a dumb thing to say. Anyway, it comes with practice. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But um, I was I was also gonna pick an anime. I was gonna go Baki the Grappler because I did recently just go all the way back and watch all the old stuff before the Netflix stuff, and oh, that is okay, a okay. really dumb show. But honestly, I think I'm gonna go with Veronica Mars. <laughs> Which is another like yeah. new ish show. That's um, oh Kristen girl, Bell. Christian Bell from yeah, Good Place. Yeah. From the Good Place. Yeah. Oh it man, was... you watched that? Man, I watched all of that. It looks so corny. That's the that okay. Listen, that looks <laughs> Veronica super Mars. Corny, bro. Veronica Mars is a show of its time. Okay. <laughs> it, <laughs> it, <laughs> Well, what time is that? Oh, right. that? If you if you if you if you don't know what Veronica Mars is, it's basically it's a high school drama about a girl whose father is an ex police chief and then is now a private investigator. So the okay. daughter basically just picks up all this private investigation skills from her dad and she uses it to help her friends in school. So well, let's not say friends because it's all this drama. But the yeah, thing yeah. is the the show it sets off a very interesting premise. It's like uh, it's like a it's like a very rich and very poor city. Like there's like a big um, poverty gap, gap in between. In yeah. between, mm-hmm. but you know because there's one big high school, everyone is at the same high school. So you have a lot of like race uh, issues, you know, class issues, like cultural issues. Like it's it's really interesting that those dynamics. And then Veronica somehow ends up in the center of everyone's BS because she's very good at discovering secrets and everybody has secrets especially rich people <laughs> so christian bell's playing a high schooler christian this bell? was a long while ago. no christian bell no. Yeah, playing a high school yeah but this honestly was a couple years ago. yeah this is this was from like the 2000s like the early yeah. 2000s why do i think that was a new show because they brought it back the okay show, yeah the show the show didn't get a proper finale and then like fans petitioned um it was a kickstarter campaign that got a whole bunch of fan support and then they brought back the final season and then it put everything on Hulu. So I was able to just watch it all the way straight through from like the early 2000s to uh, the mid 2000s, I think, or like the early 2010s or something. And then um, there's a gap of like 10 years and then you see her as an adult doing like a final mystery. So honestly, it's a great show. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend that I didn't sleep on it. (laughs) Because I definitely was like I didn't I had no ish I had no care about it whatsoever. It was my girlfriend Kia who was like, Oh, I used to watch Rock and Mars when I was a kid. They have all the shows here. Let's watch it, let's watch it, let's watch it. I was like, All right, fine, let's watch Rock and Mars. Instantly sucked in. Oh my god. <laughs> like, it's it's actually really good. Like compelling characters, like good plot lines. I like, heard the story went the other way around though. What do you mean by that? With the other you way were like you used to watch Veronica Mars when you were young. No, I'd never seen it before. Let's watch it. Like let's it used watch to it. matter of fact, the show was so old, it used to come on um do you, Jeff, you should remember, you remember UPN used to be like a black channel, like a black network Yeah, but like channel? Moesha. Oh, okay. I remember too. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah hold on now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, first of all, just because you got older today doesn't mean we that young. Happy uh, it's birthday. Not a, it's not about an age thing. It was about it was about a region thing because I don't know how the channels. Yeah. Um, no, that was all over the place. Yeah, like, in Kingston. Yeah, no, it was here. It was here in Illinois. Yeah, so, was, uh, so like here like in the, on the East Coast, it was UPN 9. Yeah. It was like all the black shows. I think it was. Okay. UPN. So when Veronica Mars started airing, it started airing on UPN as that channel started being gentrified by other kind of predominantly white shows. That's when it got named underpaid (laughs) (laughs) N-words. And then when UPN kind of changed into, uh, what is it, the CW or something? Yeah, the CW. Yeah, the CW now. Veronica Mars was, was on that. Like, it was one of the first shows on that. So like mm-hmm. that tells you how old it is and like yeah, what uh, time it came from, but that's yeah. that's probably it? my guilty pleasure show. The WB became the CW. Channel Eleven. Oh, I think no, you're oh, right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Then what the what heck? What did you turn to? into? <laughs> channel, channel Channel Nine. No, 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 no. <laughs> channel Nine did become. Yeah, I'm interested to know this now because. <laughs> Um, it was a spinoff of a CBS corporation, Viacom's, Viacom split into two separate companies. Um, 
Come select on, programs from both networks move to the new network, the CW. So it did turn into the CW. Okay, so they they yeah. just mashed it. They into got the, two channels okay. in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So we were right. Awesome. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, WB11 did the CW ring, now. but yeah, it also took the UPN stuff, I guess. All right. So that's your history lesson for today. <laughs> that's gonna do it <laughs> for episode thirty-two of the BBE. I had Games some runner-ups. Oh, go lie. ahead. Yeah, let us. You know, know, I always got runner-ups. Oh, come on, you got no runner-ups. <laughs> What's your runner-up? Real fast, real fast. Um, Shin Chan. I love Shin Chan. Shin Chan's a good show. That show's hilarious. <laughs> it's so much poop humor, but <laughs> it's so well devil. written. <laughs> I love that one. But yeah, yeah, that, that, that's that was one of them that I have. I can't remember the other one right now. It's all right. <laughs> okay, so I'll tweet it. <laughs> Blue, where can people find you if they're looking for you on the internet? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Blue, B L U B zero N E S. Um, you can find me on Twitter mm-hmm. with just that hand. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me on Instagram with the same mm-hmm. one. You can find me on Facebook with Play with Blue Bones, and of course, you can find me on Mixer. Blue Bones X B as an Xbox. We're kind of forever. Um, <laughs> y'all check out the team pages. You know what I'm saying? You know, Facebook, we got yeah. um yeah. yeah, we got a Facebook, we got an Instagram, we got a Twitter, we got a Twitch. Yep. We got that mixer. You know what I'm saying? Hit that BBET gaming. Just search it on all your platforms. And you yeah, definitely gotcha. if you're watching here, you already for got BBET the YouTube. Gaming. You can What'd find you me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you can find me on Superman Jeff 12 Plays on Facebook That's right. and Superman Jeff 12 Mixer as Twitter. Yeah, man. Yes. What can people find you, Mr. Gamer? So you can hit me up at um, Mr. Dot Gamer at start button review Tom if you just want to. Um, you can hit me up at S B R M R G A M E R on Twitter. It's S B R underscore Mr. Gamer. No. Instagram. Yes, Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Let's remember for some reason. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then just a start button review on Facebook. And also S B R Mr. Gamer on xbox as well which is basically what i play most siggy awesome. birthday boy birthday boy <laughs> yep, you guys last, can last. find me on pretty much all social media at sigma gears nine um the facebook is sigma and sun check out uh the last time i played with uh star boy we were playing luigi's mansion we'll be doing that again this week i think that was funny that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, he didn't let me play, but we'll, we'll try to actually play <laughs> this go round. Um, you can find my reviews on uh, escapismagazine.com as well as their YouTube. And definitely please check out all the content we release on the BBET Gaming YouTube. Um, so definitely search for that. That's going to do it for episode 32. Thanks all my co-hosts once again for doing this with me. Thanks to everyone listening. We appreciate you. Yes. That's going to do it. Peace. Adios. Salute.